Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 51 of our Let's Play series, Stalingrad to Berlin. In this episode, we're going to be completing the ground movement phase of turn 27 and wrapping everything up with some look at reserve units, units we may want to build, um, and a little bit of an overview before we end the turn, move into turn 28. So in the previous turn, had quite a bit going on. Uh, kind of the first real situation of being disappointed with the AI in the game happened where they um, sent, still unknown, but some type of mechanized unit behind the lines during their turn to try to cut all of these units off. Sure, they were successful, but now they're going to lose this unit. Um, regardless of its size, it feels like a little bit of a waste because I don't know how much of an impact it's ultimately going to have on the feel of things. Uh, we also successfully pushed uh, west of Smolensk here, and we managed to encircle one of their units. Hopefully we can hold that. And then we also managed to, um, in our push towards Riga, we reconnect it with our forces. We built a bit of a pocket that is now pretty defensible. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here in the line, but they have a lot they'd have to go through to be able to really, really cut us off. I don't think there's any risk of that. Um, and we're now looking towards pushing towards Riga, um, which is going to be quite impactful. We resorted our lines by Lake Ilmen after they had broken through, which is really one of the first successes they've had in terms of counterattacks in a couple of turns. And we're also continuing our push towards Peskov. Right? You see, between these units and Peskov, we don't have intelligence on anything being in between us. So hopefully that forces them to reallocate. Now that we've done that quick little recap, let's get into this turn's movements. Now we left off right here, uh, south of Ariol, and for a lot of these, we're going to stay a little static uh, for two reasons. One, the Ariol front, we had to re-allocate uh, a lot of units to try to cut off this mechanized unit that went behind the lines. I also think we're going to have some supply concerns with these... Um, uh, roads and, and railroads being disrupted from this movement. And I, I think some of these guys also probably just need a bit of a rest. Well, as always, though, where an opportunity presents itself, we will go after it. So looking for that, we have here this stack worth 11. We might be able to push through there. At the very least, I think we can take these guys and say, hey, Let's beat up a little bit on the 88th Infantry that's sitting right here. So let's go ahead and do that. 8 to 1 odds, even better than that actually. Push them back. Down here we've got the 17. And I do wonder if we can attack here against the SS Estonian Motorized Brigade in the Infantry Division here. Or if it's better just to hit out at their weak points. And I think we're going to do that. Uh, yeah, especially considering these guys are already at 50 fatigue. Right, let's just maybe give them a little bit of a break. Did they counterattack here in the previous turn? They did. Okay, so we did have forces here, but they, they managed to push us back. We just had a rifle brigade, which isn't that significant. I think what we'll do is we'll push them back here, and I'm going to take both stacks just to make sure we're overwhelmingly successful here. Yep. They've been pushed back now. And then this was the unit that ended up having to retreat, so I'm going to put them on the HQ and set them to refit, just to give them a little bit of a break on the line. And I think we might take this cavalry core over here, and let's take one of these rifle divisions to also help out here. Take one of you. Let's do like this rifle core. There we go. So now they don't even have two to one if they do try to counterattack. And we set ourselves up now where we've got a few more forces because of that cavalry division coming over to be able to break through here in following turns. Leaves these units a little stretched. 
we could maybe get that. Hmm. So let's move this rifle core up. You know what we're gonna move up this rifle division to. Let's take both of these guys. Let's have them attack here. This Luftwaffe field division. There was a cavalry division committed to the defense. We still won though. And I think we will let's take one of these rifle divisions and just move them over here to help maintain the defensive front. Move these guys down. So we're we're not gonna attack because we don't really have any advantages this turn. Um, but next, we'll look to see what options are, are out there for us. Right here. So these guys we had sent to go to refit. I'm betting they're okay now. Yeah, these guys are completely good. And then this tank core. How are you? You are good. Recon tanks are a little light. And the light tank destroyers, we of course are really kind of maxed out on production capacity there. Okay. So where do we want them to go? Let's take a look at the front here. Take them off refit before I forget. I don't know if it's going to be... I think I'm going to bring them down this direction to try to push here. Because I think we have plenty of units that are going to be moving west in this pocket, right? I don't know that this is the, the part of the front line that maybe needs some of that help. So let's bring down Tank Corps. This rifle division can come down here. Let's have these guys attack. It's four to one, they retreated. You're both on refit. That makes sense, but I'm gonna set you both on your HQ unit to try to help with that. Okay. And here, let's it's two to one. Let's give it a go. And we routed them. I, I kind of had a feeling based off of it being the French volunteer group. I mean, so you, you, you have to remember the combat values. It, the game does not sit there and go, you have a combat value of 10. They have a combat value of 4. Let's roll a dice and apply a percent to it. It's not actually how the combat works. Um, as we mentioned in some previous episodes earlier on in the series... I mean, it goes down to the, this squad of rifle infantry, like these handful of men, shot their carbines in this direction, and they successfully had a hit that damaged this other rifle squad, which then would simulate that they had lost some men, right? And then says, okay, that rifle squad moved up another 20 yards to the front. That's the, the degree to which the game goes into simulating combat. It's not just... You have six, they have two, the six will win. Right? It's very important to remember that. Let's now take these two units up. We'll also bring up this 128th Rifle Division. We're going to try to push through here. That was successful. And have this Rifle Brigade here too. Let's move you over here. We're gonna attack again. That time we routed them. Excellent news. And like I said, really we're gonna be able to push quite a bit in this direction, I think. So let's keep doing that. Route at them. 
then this rifle corps is able to move up. They can join in the attack here, 17 to 5. They both retreat it. Both of these rifle divisions can now come up here. Let's take then this group here, the 159th, because they're a little stronger, don't have fatigue, etc. We're going to have them try to break through here. Perfect, one retreat, one route. And some of these are just going to be kind of progressive moves forward. We can come up to... Yeah, you know what, let's... Let's go all the way up there. No! 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 Oh, my goodness. Another misclick. The, um... Railroad Brigade unit, I accidentally moved to the front line instead of... Uh, what would have been... <laughs> we would have had this entire rail line completed and connected this turn had I not made that crucial mistake. Oh my goodness. I don't think we don't have enough to attack. Back here, these units, we will take the two rifle divisions and move them forward. Except I again made a mistake. I just need to slow down a little. I'm going too fast with some of this. We're going to have them attack. 75th Rifle Infantry Division. Slovenian Mobile Group was assigned to help. They failed to help. Well, I should rephrase that. They unsuccessfully um, defended. <laughs> Bring up that artillery. Bring up these guys. So now if we have them all attack. It's three to one odds. They retreat it. Good stuff. Just all along the front. We're gonna keep keep pushing. So let's have these guys attack. Three to one again. They're unsuccessful though. Okay. So let's do this. We'll bring you up. You up. And we're going to try attacking again. They held. Okay. What if we go... Try one more time. They retreated. Okay. It was probably a little more costly than it otherwise would have been. But really want to... Keep things going. And another advantage of this now, right, is now these guys end the turn and they're not in a zone of control of the enemy, which is very impactful. So that's another reason for being a little more aggressive there, is it, it weakened our units more than they would have otherwise been weakened. But the benefit is they can now recover. And we'll take... That rifle division go there. You two can come up here. I'm thinking we push back against the blue infantry division. Let's do it. We managed to hold. Okay. Well, let's try to push through here. They retreat it. Good news. And then we're going to take... Let's just do this one rifle division to try to have them break through. Ah, remaining armor is committed to the defense. We still won, though. Um, but probably was just a little more costly than it otherwise would have been. Take both these stacks. We're going to attack here. Three to one. They retreat it. Good news. Then we'll take some of these units that were in the back and move them forward now. Have them 
push against this unit that already retreated. They have multiple units committed to the defense. That's probably going to result in them holding, and they did. Okay. Let's now take this rifle core up. Defensive value of 9 now. This rifle division, this tank core can come up. We will also take 47th Guards Rifle Division, and we're going to attack here, 3 to 1. They retreat it. This stack can attack here. Route at them. On and on we go. Him up. Take these two divisions. There we go. So that's eight. Should be enough there to hold. Especially since we're not going to give these guys any break. We're going to keep pushing. And let's have them push south here. Route it. That infantry division element. Good stuff. Really just all around excellent. Can move up a couple of the HQ units here to make sure we're keeping everyone within range. A little easier for supplies to come through. All right, good stuff. Now here we're north of Stellino. We're gonna again try to start encircling the city a little bit, but first, there's some notable units like the 3rd Panzer, and this is the Totenkopfess's Panzer Grenadier Division, that really are going to make it a little difficult for us. Right? They, they are here with one intention, and that intention is to prevent us from sweeping south and surrounding Stalino. That's why the 3rd Panzer is south of the city, and the Totenkopfess's Panzer Grenadier Division is north of the city. But one of the ways we can kind of counteract this is by taking a wider route around um much like how we at the very beginning of the series right did kind of that historical encirclement of, of stalingrad um where we went around their main perimeter of defense right we pushed through where they were lighter and that then forces them into a decision of do i want to retreat the totenkopfess's panzer grenadier division or risk it being encircled um and and lost for good in stalino so, decisions for them to make. Here we have... I think I'm just going to turn these guys into a um, rifle core. There we go. Because we've got things like these rifle divisions we really need to get up. Take the 223rd. And what I want to do is I want to push back this 20th Panzer. I think we're going to take, make sure we've got some support units assigned so like we can attach the uh, 97th Anti-Tank Regiment. Let's, it, it's a little aggressive, but let's attach the separate tank regiment here. And then we'll also do the 762nd Anti-Tank Regiment. This rifle division, we don't really have anything meaningful we could attach. Same here, a lot of those support units to refit a bit. Let's see what we have over here. This panzer division, I really want to make sure that by the end of the battle, even if we don't win, they just don't have any armor left to be effective in other areas of the map. We'll attach this anti-tank regiment. And the 15th guards. And not much we can do there. Is there a unit that would be better? Oh, I came in the wrong spot here. So four is our lowest. I don't think we have too much that's gonna meaningful, meaningfully different than that. So let's go ahead and attack. 34 to 9, fortification level 1. 
let's just try to kill some armor. Right? That's kind of the real objective. And not only did we win, we achieved that main objective. Let's take a look at that one. That was fun. I enjoyed that one. So here, men, we lost almost exactly the same between the two of us. They lost 25 guns. We lost 20. Look at their numbers, though, how they were outnumbered. They had 100 armor. We had 50. They lost 54 of them. So oh, I click the wrong thing there. Let's look at the details. Yes, yes, yes. So they lost 14 Panzer threes, three M's. Um, five pans or three N's. Okay. Perfect. Now we did lose two KV-1s, but really with those ratios, that's fine. I'm curious how much of an impact those KV-1s had on the battle since they were in there. And you see that they are pretty impactful. So they had six armor-piercing hits that destroyed their target, which were most likely... Um, the Panzers, right? So that was very effective of them. And then the T-34s at four. Let's take a look at the gun placement, or the, the gun units here. So really, the 45 millimeter M37 anti-tank gun was one of the most successful, which makes sense against the, the, P, the Panzer III. That can be pretty effective. The Panzer III is a lighter tank. And then the 76 millimeter anti-tank gun also saw some success. That was some good news. That, that was really good news there. Um, because not only did we push them back, um, it also means they are now that much less effective the next time we fight them. Right, and that's just so critical. Down here, we're gonna take this entire stack and move them up. And same thing here, just outside of Stellino. There we go. And let's just make sure we push back this unit. 23 to 4. They retreat it. Good stuff. Okay. Let's make sure the artillery is on reserve to be able to help out if they try to counter there. We have them on reserve too, which is good. This rifle division needs to be put on refit. So let's do that. Same with you. You're already on refit. You're at cavalry division though, so how far are you from being combat effective. You're actually really good, so we're going to take you off refit. I'm going to move them up here, set them on reserve. Then this guy can go back to his HQ on refit to help recover a little more quickly. Okay, Down here, I think we're just going to kind of hold the line, right? Well, I we're going to hold the line in some of the areas, and others we're going to push forward, right? So here we're going to go up. Move up here. And we've left ourselves a bit out here. You can come off refit. I'm going to put you on reserve right down here. Hoping that you can help if they try to counterattack south. And then let's take a look at what we have for support units for anti-tank. I'm going to assign this anti-tank regiment. Here we have an anti-tank regiment. Perfect. Perfect. And anti-tank regiment. Right. Because the, the greatest threat here is them counterattacking with the 3rd Panzer Division. Down here... I don't know that we have any unit that is more, more ready to defend, so I think we're just going to leave it. I don't think they'll attack. They have 7 to 4. It's not even 2 to 1 odds. We're just going to keep pushing. Perfect. Perfect. 
because we want to start putting pressure on them as they look to stop us coming out of the Crimea. Move all these guys up here. This mountain division looks like you're ready to go. So let's bring you to the line. There we go. Let's HQ unit can move up. As can this guy. Run refit the here. Yeah, you're good to go. Set you on reserve and bring you here. You're also on refit, but you're fine. So let's get you towards the front. Come here. Good stuff. Same thing with this rifle division. Making some progress. Let's try to capture this port. And we got it. So we got the depot that was there too. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Now bring up my army HQ. Yeah, I need to keep you in a good range there. Okay, that's looking good. So we're sweeping south of Stellino and we're going to start putting pressure here on the next target. Um, and then, yeah, pushing north of Stellino as well. Just have to try to avoid getting ourselves weakened against the Tomkopfessus Panzer Grenadier Division and the 3rd Panzer, and instead just try to outmaneuver them. Right, that's kind of the objective here. And, and the Stellino's just going to be an encirclement. There's no doubt about it. Which is fine. Let's um, take a look for some nostalgia purposes how the Caucasus region is doing from its railroad. Look at that. This was all red. All red a mere, what, 10 turns ago? Something like that? Now look at it. It's a booming industrial base of sorts. Now, down here, we made the decision um, to deploy a whole bunch of units from the reserve box to the Crimea to rush Odessa. And I'm glad we did that. Um, so the very first thing that I want to deal with is just, okay, how far can we get towards Odessa with the units we have here? And then again, a bit of a shuffle um, going west to, to then continue covering our front lines here, right? So this guy we're going to move to here, I think. And we managed to capture the depot, and we're going to sit right here in this town. And that is now a bit of a defensive position for us. Move these guys up. Now we have this line of units going west. Rifle Brigade we're going to bring up here too, I think. Let's have them go in the town. Good stuff. Go over here, I think. I was going to have them stay here, but I'm, I'm so confident now with the forces we've brought in that we're going to be able to hold this um, Crimean Peninsula, that I, I think it's going to be just fine. If anything, we're kind of to the point of, you know what, here we just want to hold a defensive line. Because these guys are going to be bringing so much pressure south, uh, that I think they're just going to naturally withdraw. Really what I want to do is hold a static front here, and expand west. See, if I push north here, it widens the front line 
reducing the number of units I have to make a push towards Odessa. That's my logic for this. Might be right, might be wrong. It's kind of what's going through my head. So let's pull back some of these units here. Okay, so that, that kind of deals with the front line as is today. Now we need to start bringing up our reinforcements. Right off the bat, I think I'm just going to bring Yeah, I'm going to have all of you come west towards Odessa. This unit we can move up here. That's 13 units each of the sexes. No, I don't think it's going to matter if we're there this turn or not. I'm just going to have them go there. So we're going to send a couple to help reinforce this part of the line. But really, then everything else is going to head west. I'm going to do this now before I forget or misclick, etc. And I think I am going to first build the rail line to... Oh, geez, it's such a tough question. I think first I'm going to build the rail line up here. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to build it out to up here and then come back south towards Sevastopol, I think. I really don't know that there's a right answer in this case. But my logic for this is the very least then I can have this port and over here and supply getting closer here to the front. If I head south, I just in the end find myself with um, one more turn of all the supplies for these units going via truck back here or via the ports that they're currently in. So actually on that note, let's see where they're getting their supply from right now. Yeah. So it's either Sevastopol, this port right here, or over here. It's just how it laid out last turn. So in terms of depots, we do now have these three depots. So hopefully that will help. Now, let's look here like we've got this tank core. Should be able to get up towards our front lines pretty quickly. Motorized unit bring up here. Rifle division join it. Tank court come there. And take a while for some of these guys to get up there, but that's it's okay. fact is, we brought them in at a good time. At least that's my feeling on it. So these are all part of the North Caucasus front. I think I'm going to reposition them here. Okay. That deals with everything in the Crimea. Next turn, we will cross here. So we're probably, probably two to three turns worth of movement away from actually getting to Odessa proper. The big thing is, can I get the tank core enough fuel to be able to next turn rush almost to the border of Odessa and just kind of blitz it, right? That's, that's the question. And if I can, oh man, that's just so exciting. If I can, it just opens up so much for us. I mean, we can then start looking at heading south to Bucharest. We can cross the mountains here to Budapest. We can start coming south um, through, like, the, the Czechoslovakias and such of the day. Yeah. 
Okay. And really, all we have to do is get to Odessa, capture its port, and then hold a defensive line from here back to the Crimea. Not for supplies, more so so that way we don't find ourselves surrounded in Odessa and we can bring in reinforcements as needed. I mean, worst case scenario, if they have a huge contingent coming down here to try to capture or keep Odessa, we turn it into a city fort or something and we hold out for a while. But I, I don't see that being the path we'll go down. So yeah, it's looking good. And again, all of these units here are going to start feeling so much pressure as we move west of they're not going to want to get cut off. If we can take Zapardai, um, that really then leaves them without any rail connections at all for supplies. As of right now, they have a total of two routes for supplies. One is north-south here, and then the other is kind of roundabout going through here. Which can I... Maybe just this turn. Cut that off. Yeah, so I captured a depot there. Oh. Okay, so this guy's going to take a lot of casualties next turn. Um, but we cut off this rail line going south. So maybe it was worth it. I don't know. But the 257th Infantry Division is very, very much capable of counterattacking and just crushing this unit. So we'll see how this all goes. And then, yes, Delino, we're just going just gonna to try and encirclement. So let's take a look at the reinforcement schedule. Uh, we had a whole bunch of stuff come in this turn. Next turn, we see we have a whole swath of SP guns, which frustrates me a little bit because we still find ourselves in a position where we can't build enough SU-76s or um, 122s, etc. Um, hopefully that does continue to improve, though, as those factories ramp up, because they're very important to the war, and they were historically as well, after they saw how successful the German SP units were. Um, and then we have more coming in turn 29, which is two turns from now, but I'm excited that we get this six guards mechanized core, right? And then I'm also excited that we get a new front and a new tank army in turns 33 and 35. Uh, so that, that's going to help a lot. In the interim, if we look at our reserve box, we see here we don't have too many units that we could bring in, but I'm debating, um, debating if maybe we bring in some more of these airborne divisions here to help with that push in the Crimea. Conversely, we could also bring them in to try to help with our expanded front that we have to deal with pushing towards Riga. And you know what, as I say these things aloud, I think we're going to bring them in here. Um, before we do that, though, we have a whole swath of units that had come into Rejev that we need to get to the front line. Um, and we have a quick little decision to make of do we want to... Or actually, do we even bring them down here towards the Smolensk front? That might make more sense, actually. Because we're not that far from Minsk. Hmm. Hmm. Need to think about this. Riga is more important. Capturing Minsk is really nice. How far ahead of schedule would we be if we took Minsk? Uh, which one is it? App info, that's it. So, Soviets recaptured it in July of 44. So we'd be a whole year ahead of schedule. Riga was October of 44. Again, a whole year ahead of schedule. So here's what I'm going to do. The units we have in Rezhev, all of these, I'm going to bring down 
to push on Minsk. Then I'm going to bring in the three airborne units that we still have remaining and anything else I may have missed in the reserve box. And I'll deploy them to help just be additional units that can be used for building a defensive perimeter on our push towards Riga. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start moving these units south. And I do think that I'm going to march them. Because supply, we've noticed a trend where our supply situation has gotten a little worse um, in recent turns. We're going to bring up these motorized units here. There we go. Anyone else motorized? Okay. So the rest of these rifle corps can just start marching. Excellent. That is a whole lot of men that can come and break through to Minsk. A whole lot of them. I'm going to actually start assigning some of these, though, to armies that are in the area. We'll do you to the 41st Army. Can also be 41st Army. These guys. Put all three of them in the 29th Army, I think. There we go. The 29th Army has a fair amount of capacity, so we're probably going to put even more here. So. We have enough for one more. We do not. So we'll have you join the 50th Army, I think. The 50th Army is probably over here, I bet. Yeah, that's the 50th Army. Okay, fair enough. Oh, didn't need to do that. Let's see. Can you go? 22nd Army. That's the 22nd Army. No. Oh, okay. That's a good, good spot for you. And then we have... 49th Army. Forty-ninth Army's right down here. All right. So we've got them all assigned. I also know that in the Crimea, I need to assign these units because they were all part of Stavka. Which this is going to start to get a little tricky because we don't have that much capacity in some of these armies. But we will make it work. 37th Army. Get a little confusing that the color of the 37th Army is also white. Let's assign you. Ooh, 37th Army is over capacity now. Might just need to have some of you go to the. Well, we'll keep doing 47th here. I think I want these airborne units on this side to be part of the 47th Army. There we go. So we're going to need another army south here in the Crimea. We're going to be over capacity on all of these. This 
So I think for now I'm going to put a number of these just to the, the front. It's not ideal, but it keeps them somewhere. They are... All of you, my goodness. Really need another army over here. And as a consequence of that, I actually think I'm going to move up the um, front headquarters even further. Just because I've had to go and do that. Okay. Control 9, I want to see where our other rail repair units are. There was my horrible blunder there. We have one here and one up here. So let's see. So I haven't done anything with them yet. I think I'm going to have this guy come south here because I need to start connecting all of these back to Smolensk. So then hopefully if I can knock this guy out in the next turn, um, I can then keep going through Smolensk here. Good stuff. And if we look north, we have this guy. There's quite a bit here for you to do. Is this hex broken? It is. So let's move out this HQ unit, come here, just like that, there we go, there, there, good stuff. So we've got a whole chain here that's being repaired, that's good, and then we'll continue that south so we can connect to the main grid. Right now, all of these guys are outside of rail conditions. Very well. And then, like I said, I think we're going to take those airborne units that we still have, and we'll see if there's anything else to deploy them here. Lucky Luke, he's too far. Let's see if I can just toss them here. Normally I try to do them in larger towns so that way they have better supply uh, when they first arrive. But for just things like um, airborne units and such, I think it's going to be simple enough to just put them there. Deploying these guys. I'm going to bring in some rifle brigades as well to just kind of... I mean, a, a full-strength rifle brigade in the middle of heavy woods is still going to give us a moderate defensive value for holding a front line. And you see with the terrain here, there's going to be some opportunity for that, right? Like, so once we start taking these hexes, park in a rifle brigade right here will be enough in the line to hold it against any regular size counterattack. Can move you back into position there. And then let's maybe see too about building some new units. So, Mechanized Core, let's build one of you, and we have enough mechanized brigades to do so, so we'll build you. And then, let's see, we have these 43A tank brigades. I think we might wait on you. Because we, we have a lot of armor that we've lost that probably I'd rather have those armor replacements not going towards the creation of new brigades, but rather into the field for refits. For rifle divisions, right, we're, we're kind of capped out here, and one of the reasons is we don't yet have the 1943 uh, TOE build. So I think we might have to wait for that. 
Looks like the 43 Rifle Brigade build came in, but I don't really want more Rifle Brigades right now. Now, Cavalry Corps would be interesting, but we already have all of our Cavalry Divisions deployed, and I can't build any new because I'm over my limit. Let's see. don't know that there's anything else we're going to build here. Yeah, we're going to wait on building. Maybe next turn or the turn following would be a better time for that. Let's make sure we do our um, AI depot management. Good stuff. And then we'll end our turn and we'll, we'll see what the Axis player does. We have had a lot of movement, a lot of things going around here. So let's see what happens. Go past some of these air resupplies that we have happening. And we are now in the Germans turn. Overall, I, I'm pretty happy this turn we ended up encircling a couple of different units. Uh, so that's really going to be impactful. Uh, we also have taken a ton of ground. It seems like we have a clear shot to Odessa. Probably another turn until we find out if there's anything in the city to defend against us. Um, brought in reinforcements, I think, at the right time into the Crimea. Maybe could have done it one turn sooner. Um, but hindsight's twenty twenty. And then when we look at some of our key objectives, I mean, I, I think securing the breakout that we had towards Riga and reestablishing our pocket there was critical in turn 27 um, and really puts the pressure on the Axis player uh, because, again, if we take Riga, Army Group North is just done for. That, that's just an entire Army Group worth of units they're not going to have to retreat back to defend with Germany. And I, I could certainly then see this scenario ending a little bit little bit earlier. I should be knocking on wood because you guys know my luck when I make these predictions of what will happen. Um, around our Yol and such, I don't know that I've seen as much progress as I would have liked in recent turns, but it really hasn't been a strategic thing for us. We had this great idea of connecting this rail line right here that I'm hovering over uh, that will run up to Smolensk, but we haven't been able to push through and capture. We, we've had some progress here, but we have more to do. I think that will really help with supplies once we can do that, though. And certainly it, it hurts the German player as the rail networks start to get a little less dense as we get past some of these areas like Aryol and Smolensk, which then makes their resupply much more difficult. Actually, did a fair number of sorties here for their air operation turn. Now they're in their ground movement phase. Let's let's see what they decide to do. So they're doing air resupply of this unit that's cut off, which makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. They're losing some planes, but definitely not as many as I would like to be shooting down. Okay. Down 22%. There's kind of one more simulation round here for them to do counterattack. Here we go. Okay, so south of our push towards Riga, they counterattacked in one hex here. Oh! Leningrad. They pushed us back from the line near Leningrad. That's a twist. Interesting. They had almost a hundred attacking combat value there for that. That's quite incredible. I mean, it doesn't have any material impact on any of our strategy or tactics or how the turn's going to play out, but just was not expecting that. And again, that's I think that's one of the qualities here of a good AI is can it do things that you don't expect but still make sense? And I think that kind of didn't make sense because that that then alleviates some pressure of maybe us pushing south, collapsing this Riga Army Group North pocket. Interesting. 
Because honestly, I, I saw that and my immediate reaction was, oh my gosh, do I need to worry about defending Leningrad? Um, because that's some serious firepower they have there. But we're probably okay. We'll, we'll have to take a look at it next turn. Now it's going through our logistics phase here for a minute. Yes, yeah, so there wasn't quite as much activity as there was the previous turn. The turn 26 going into 27, they had a lot of counterattacks. Really successful, I felt. I was really impressed by it. This turn was a little lighter. I'm wondering if maybe there were some um, mud implications or uh, overall just weariness from the previous turn's counterattacks where they needed to let their units rebuild combat preparation points because that really does have such an impact on the combat value and the strength of the units that are attacking. I think a bit of a wild card that I hadn't been expecting but this is just kind of a a convenient consequence of the plan I've put together here is how close we are to Minsk right now. I mean just looking at that that's really exciting to see. There's some tough ground in between us still but I'm excited to see that. So at the end of the turn, we lost 50,000 men, which is way down from some of the other turns we've had more recently. 700 guns, 420 armored fighting vehicles, 80 airframes, net positive 45,000 men on the map. The Axis player was down three, or excuse me, was only up 3,000. Positive 715 guns, 115 armor. Really glad to see that. We had a few turns where this number was negative for a couple of turns. And then airframes positive 207. Low supply units at 63, so that's gone down over the past couple of turns, which is good. Under strength units at 123 continues to inch up a little bit higher and higher. So something that I'm, I'm certain is related to our pushes here in the south by Stellino and how aggressive we've been. When we look at new events, RAF raids in 1943, so that's having an impact on the Axis player. Mighty 8th, same thing, and Soviet partisans doing what they do. That's going to bring us to a close, guys. Thanks, as always, for your support, and hope you've been enjoying the, the series and the videos. If you got any questions, comments, um, or just general feedback, please let me know in the comments section below. I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can there. And, as always, strategy gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.